Let's talk Tanya for the 15th of Nisan, the first day of Pesach of a leap year. Over the last two days, we've spoken about the importance of developing a yira for God, an awe, a reverence for Hashem, and how important that is in our service of Him. And two days ago in the Tanya, we spoke about a meditation that we should be thinking about before we study Torah, before we do a mitzvah, thinking about how God is present, this great and incredible God who created everything and is within everything and beyond everything, and He is over here together with me, watching me, hoping, expecting, relying on me to do the mitzvah. And this is supposed to um, cause us to have that feeling, that feeling of yira, that feeling of awe and respect and reverence for God. But what if it doesn't? What if I contemplate and my heart is not uh, responding? What then? So Dr. Rebbe says, first of all, we mentioned yesterday that there's a separate mitzvah in the Torah of of serving God, of being a servant of God. So if I contemplate God's greatness, and ultimately this motivates me to do a mitzvah, even if I don't feel that feeling in the heart, so even if you're going to argue that I am not doing the mitzvah of Yira, which is the mitzvah of reverence for God, it's still important because I'm still doing the mitzvah of Avoida, the mitzvah of being a servant of God. That's number one. But then the Alter Rebbe proceeds to argue and say, the truth is, even in such a case that you're not feeling any awe and reverence in your heart, that still is considered yira, awe, and therefore is a fulfillment also of the mitzvah of yira sashem, of having awe for God. How is that? So to, uh, to prove his point, the Alter Rebbe cites an interesting story in the Talmud. The Talmud tells us that one of the great sages of the Mishnah, his name was Rabbi Yechelon ben Zakkai. And he literally was the greatest of the great. He led the transition of Judaism from the time of the Beis HaMikdash to after the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash of the Holy Temple, because he was the leader at that time, um, had a profound impact on Judaism till this very day. And as he's on his deathbed, he had a message for his students. He told his students, I wish that your fear of God should be on the same level as the fear that you have for your fellow human being. Now, the students were a little taken aback by that. And they said, Rebbe, really? That's all? Our fear of God should only be on that level? He says, yeah, think about it for a second. When you want to do something which is inappropriate, what do you say to yourself? I don't want anyone to see me. But nevertheless, we, <laughs> when we're alone in the room, we don't say, but God is watching me. So... Rabbi Yochanan said, he says, I wish that at the very least you should have that same respect for God, which means not to do something inappropriate in his presence, as the respect you have and the, the yira that you have. That's the word that he uses, kimayra basar adam, the fear that you have for your fellow human being. Now, when I don't want to do something inappropriate in the presence of someone else, is that an awe? Is that a reverence? Not really. But because I know the person's watching me, I'm not going to do it. So if I have that same feeling about God, which is, I don't really feel the awe, I don't feel the reverence, but if I think to myself, God is watching me, and therefore I don't do it, so Rabbi Yechelen ben Zakkai says, that is Moira, that is Yira, that is considered awe also. So even if I can't have that feeling in my heart, if I'm to think about the fact that God is present, and that thought is what stops me from doing something, which God does want me to do, that also qualifies as yira, that qualifies as awe and reverence for God. However, all that alone is not enough. Yira alone is not enough. As we mentioned, yira, awe, is one wing. But a bird can't fly with one wing. A mitzvah can't fly with one wing also. We also need to have, to, we also need to have ava, love, or to put it in somewhat different words, it's not enough for me to be a servant of God. I also need to be God's child. And why is that? Because when I serve God with awe, it's about Him, but it's not about me. And the ideal service of God is that it's about Him and also about me. I'm doing it for Him, but it's something that I also am excited and passionate about also. I am a holy person because I want to do it also. What kind of love for God do I need to have? Are there any specifications in terms of this love? The answer is yes, and that will be the next few segments of Let's Talk Tanya.